Well, Qantas has agreed to a $100 million fine by the consumer watchdog for misleading customers and selling tickets to flights that it had already cancelled. The airline was accused of selling tickets to more than 70,000 flights that it never planned to put on. The major penalty is the consumer watchdog's largest ever settlement, the airline now, is saying it is sorry and contrite. For more, we're joined by finance editor Gemma Acton. Hiya, Gemma. Hi, Gemma. Uh, what does this mean for affected customers? What's the, what's the flow-on effect for other airlines? Well, remember this should never happen and they think right. in total it affected around 880,000 customers. So not just people who booked, uh, but people who factored times and prices into their plan. So you, sometimes, you know, you look at certain flights, you don't end up booking them, but it's all a consideration. That is an incredible amount of people over the space of two years. This is an enormous fine. So Qantas made around $18 million in revenue from these flights. It's already had to pay out $20 million in compensation. And now on top of that, a $100 million fine. So $120 million it's costed for $18 million of revenue. This is sending a really, really clear message to other airlines this behaviour is not acceptable. So what do they do now? Jack up air, air flights <laughs> to pay for the $100 million fine? I think they made quite a lot during COVID, so they should have enough to, right, to yeah, pay okay. for that. In the piggy bank? Um, but on, on a good note, they did change the operations and systems, so this shouldn't happen again at Qantas, mm -hmm. and it's obviously sent a very clear warning sign to all other airlines as well. Mm. Uh, still in the sky, the federal government has announced plans to overhaul the way airlines take off and land at Sydney Airport. Uh, what's this about? There's a big battle for slots at airports and um, the, the big airlines have really got them sewn up. They've got a lot of these slots. So if you have a flight that's delayed or mo moved off if there's a storm or some sort of incident, it can be really hard to fly it at a later time um, because, specifically, it's in the airport, there's a curfew as well, so there's only so many slots available. This legislation now makes it easier for um, airlines to move flights later. And also, if you're not using your slots properly, if you're guarding them, uh, you're going to have to give them up. So we're going to give other airlines a shot at having these mm. slots if you're not using them properly. So overall, it just makes it easier for flights to take off and land and, and keeps an eye on, on what's happening with them. Good. All right, uh, let's move on a bit here. And we've been given an insight into what the RBA was discussing at the last meeting. Yes, so the, on balance, it looks as though they've become a little bit more open to the possibility of an earlier rate hike, a little bit, like a little crack chink in the door. Um, the Commonwealth Bank thinks that they will cut in December and they're among the ones who think that there was some indication here that yes, the Reserve Bank is still saying inflation's too high and they're not going to move before that, but overall it was a little more amenable. Uh, NAB is another interesting one. NAB doesn't think the Reserve Bank's going to cut until February, but yesterday they went ahead and cut their fixed rates on some products by up to 0.65%, which is a big cut. Now you can get some fixed rates for 5 point, or under 6%. Um, at NAB, so on the on whole, good news, even mm. though inflation is still too high. So a glimpse of a rate cut. Glimpse of a rate cut, cut yes. Okay. Also, there are growing calls for the government to reconsider new scam laws. These are meant to be easy to get your money back, but, but why are the critics not happy? This sounds like it's a good thing. Yeah, look, this is a really tricky one, Carly. Mm. A lot of money, like $2.74 billion, Australians lost to scams last year, so it's clearly impacting and in some cases ruining a lot of lives. But if we make it too easy to get your money back, it runs the risk that we'll be a little less vigilant if we think, oh, well, if, I, if this is a scam, I'm going to get my money back anyway, what does it matter? So it's finding that balance between making sure people have personal responsibility for being very diligent to what they're clicking on um, and then making sure that in unfair cases they do get compensated. So this particular process, the consumer groups are pushing back, saying... It'll mean that there'll be it'll take up to two years probably, and there are 30 steps. It just makes it too too difficult for victims to to claim compensation. Sure. You'd put in one um, application asking for compensation, and anyone involved, so the different banks, the platform, the telecom provider, anyone who is involved, would sort of sort it out amongst themselves who pays you back. So you can see a lot of fighting potentially oh, between these yeah. different institutions. Yeah. It would get very mess messy and very time consuming. Um, Gemma, because it's the morning show and it's a finance <laughs> segment, we always like to find a Taylor Swift angle. <laughs> There is always a Taylor Swift so, angle. Ta Taylor Swift, uh, the richest female performer on the planet. These numbers are, br are staggering, unbelievable, aren't they? They are, and I've got to say, I'm so pleased for her. Like, I didn't actually get to go to a concert, but a lot of people did, and I know people 
absolutely loved her Australian concerts. She made five million dollars per concert in Australia. Per concert. Per concert. So around thirty-five million dollars overall, which is tremendous, and that's gone. Um, tremendous gone if you heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, she brought so much joy to people at those concerts. Yeah, I think yeah, well yeah. Done here. Um, she has, has gone some way towards making her. I think it's two point seven billion Australian dollars, roughly, that mm. she's now worth. Um, Rihanna behind on about two billion Australian, but still decent showing. And then Madonna and Beyonce coming in third and fourth place, tied on around 1.25. So all very impressive. The only slightly depressing thing is just how much further ahead the, the best paid male is, and that's Jay-Z on 3.7 billion. So um, oh. still a significant margin there, but nonetheless, a great effort by Taylor Swift. Isn't it funny, when you see the concerts and the, and the talk is always, how on earth does she do that night after <laughs> night, get up there in the high heels, do all the dance moves? Five million dollars a night. I tell you what, I'd, I'd be getting up you'd there in my high heels. Would you, Kylie? Would you? <laughs> I reckon you'd do it. I reckon you'd do it for one minute. <laughs> Five million reasons to back up and do it all again. <laughs> wow. Oh, you know what? You'd still be uh, still after 15 minutes on stage. You'd be like, oh, these oh, heels, these... <laughs> oh, these muddy heels. Um, thank you, Gemma. Oh, we covered a lot there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Gemma. What? I don't think they ride up the back, and you'd have to be like, no. Well, I have. Uh, sorry, <laughs> it's been a while since I dressed as a cowgirl. <laughs> it's been, but been I, a while I, since you yeah. made your sequin leotard on. <laughs>